Let's try out another interesting question from MIT 2006 Integration B. And this one is definite integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over this crazy expression x plus square root of 1 plus x squared and you're squaring the entire quantity. So what is this going to come out to be? Well, maybe the first thing you thought of when you see square root of 1 plus x squared is to use trigonometric substitution to set up our set up our substitution something like this we have our x as the opposite one is our adjacent and our hypotenuse is one plus x squared so our x is tangent theta and square root of one plus x squared is secant theta and you may you may be tempted to make this substitution dx is secant squared of theta d theta so we have secant squared of theta d theta uh, divided by our x is tangent data plus secant data squared and our bound since our x is going from 0 to infinity that's the same thing as data going from 0 to pi over 2 because tangent of pi over 2 is infinity and you you may come to this and you may try to simplify this make more substitution but in the end it's going to it's not going to work out it's going to be very 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 hard for you to get anywhere using trigonometric substitution because <laughs> this is just an ugly expression you can't do much with it and i encourage you guys to try it out if you if you wish to labor for some time using this using this fun expression but i recommend you do not so let's let's get rid of this let's get rid of this and we are not going to use this trick substitution because it's not going to get us anywhere and we are going to use euler substitution euler the famous mathematician perhaps one of the most famous Euler substitution and you guys may not have heard of it you may have so just in case you have not I'm going to go over the Euler substitution because it's not extremely common you use Euler substitution when you have integral of some rational function of x and square root of ax squared plus bx plus c dx to get rid of the square root and you may say oh, what, what am I talking about well we have this right here we have a function of x and the function of square root of a quadratic in x so right here and the entire thing ignoring this radical sign is rational so in our case we can apply euler substitution and there are three ways of applying euler substitution in for our case we are going to use euler substitution number one which is i believe when a is greater than zero and what we are going to do we are going to let our our expression square root of one plus x squared because that's the radical part that's the problem that's the that's the problem part we are going to let this equal to x plus t and you may say how is this helping us well if you look at this when you square both sides of this you're going to get 1 plus x squared plus x squared plus 2t plus t squared and x squared cancel out 2xt i apologize you have 2 times x times t and x squared cancel out so by making this euler substitution one x squared are going to cancel out or going to or going to cancel out going to cancel out that's the first positive and the second thing you are not going to have any radical the radicals are going to go away uh, at least of our x's or t's and you may say how, how is it going away let me show you we have let's go down we have integral uh what was it one over one over x plus square root of one plus x squared square the dx and by making the substitution our one plus x squared is going to become x plus t and what is the value of x in terms of t we can even figure out the value of x so we have one equals two keep on going with this expression 2xt plus t squared so we get one minus t squared is 2xt also known as also known as our x our x is equal to 1 minus t squared over 2t so we can plug in our x into this expression let me just show you so 1 over we have 1 minus t squared over 2t because x is the same thing as 1 minus t squared over 2t plus 
square root of 1 plus x squared from the beginning is x plus t. So x plus t and our x, our x is simply 1 minus t squared over 2t plus t squared. And what's our dx? Let's find our dx. So that's our x. So our dx is going to be, let me simplify this expression as 1 over 2t minus t over 2. So when you differentiate this, you should get negative 1 over t squared minus 1 half, also known as negative of 2t squared uh, 1 plus t squared. So our dx, I gotta put dt, is equal to negative of 1 plus t squared over 2t squared dt. And you may say, what have we done? Well, first of all, First of all, uh, we don't we have our new expression in new new function in terms of t, and we don't have any radical function. We used to have this crazy square root of one plus x squared that was stopping us from doing anything to this integral. We no longer have square root of x or square root of t. So this may be the way to go, and that's what Euler substitution is about. You have a rational function of square root of some some quadratic of x, and Euler substitution helps you get rid of it and replace it with a function of t. And what are we going to do with this? Well, before we do anything, let's think about the bounds. We're going from 0 to infinity in terms of x. So what's the corresponding, what's the corresponding t? Well, our, our, our x, we can see from right here. Let me rewrite that. Square root of 1 plus x squared was x plus t from the beginning as, our, as we defined it using Euler substitution. So we have when x is 0, so we're going from x equals to 0 to infinity. When x is 0, you have square root of 1 plus 0 is t, or t is 1. So our corresponding t is 1. x approaching infinity, well, let us let me rearrange this equation and write it as t is equal to square root of 1 plus x squared minus x. As x gets really large, this expression is going to be about square root of x squared. One Adding 1 to it isn't going to matter as much. And you have minus x, which is simply x minus x or 0. So our t is going from 1 to 0. So let's make sure we know that. And let's try to evaluate this crazy thing. So we have integral from 1 to 0 of, well, let's start by simplifying what's inside. This part is going to get us, well, we have two of that. So you have 1 minus t squared over t. You're just multiplying 2, getting rid of the 2. And you have t, you're adding t to it. And t is same thing as t squared over t. And t squared is cancel out, yielding 1 over t. So you have... Uh, negative 1 plus t squared over 2t squared dt over 1 over t squared. And this is simplifying nicely. Let's, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. So you have 1 to 0. And this thing is same thing as, let's get negative out of the way. 1 plus t squared over 2t squared. And uh, dividing by t squared, dividing by 1 over t squared is same thing as multiplying by t squared. So t squared is also cancel out and you can get negative one half out of the way. And you have one plus t squared dt and look at how beautiful this expression is. We can actually do something with it. So let's do that. So you have negative one half and you have t plus t cubed over three, just basic integration from zero to one. Plugging in zero gets us zero. Plugging in one gets us minus one plus one third. And the same thing as minus four thirds. So multiplying this out gets us two thirds and we are done. So let's recap really fast. You had this crazy expression. We used Euler substitution to get rid of the radical function. We found the right bounds using, using our t and relationship with x. And you simplify this expression, which actually simplified, which was nice. And you plugged in the respective values and we got two thirds as our final answer. So our answer to this crazy expression, this, this laborious work has finally come to the end and our answer is two thirds.